Hi, I'm Karis Logue, pastry chef for Black Sheep Restaurants and Butter Cake Shop. Today, we're gonna to be making our Valentine's Day special strawberry shortcake. We chose this as our special for the holidays, and I think that seeing the shortcake built up nice and big and tall makes it feel really decadent to get to share something like this with your special someone. So for our sponge cake, we'll be using whole eggs, which will separate between whites and yolks, granulated sugar, cornstarch, sour cream, all-purpose flour, baking powder, vegetable oil, and fresh squeezed lemon juice. So here we have some fresh California strawberries sliced in half, white granulated sugar, the cream, and strawberry puree. So for the first step of making our sponge cake, we're gonna be separating our eggs between whites and yolks. The whites are gonna be going into a mixing bowl so that we can aerate them with some sugar. The yolks will eventually be mixing with some of our other fat-based ingredients like sour cream, so they're gonna go into a separate bowl. It's important for a sponge cake that when you divide, you're quite careful to only get the clean parts of the whites into the bowl and the yolks entirely separate. Always use a clean bowl as well as a clean whisk and room temperature eggs aerate a little bit faster. So we're gonna go ahead and start whisking our egg whites um, on a mixer. If you don't have a stand mixer, you can go ahead and use a hand beater as well. So we turn on our mixer to a low to medium speed and we let the eggs start to whip while we uh, sift and combine all of our other remaining ingredients. While our egg whites are whipping, we're gonna go ahead and combine um, some of our fats. So we have all of our egg yolks here we add a little bit of sour cream. I like to use sour cream in this sponge cake because it gives it a bit of a sort of tangy flavor that complements the strawberries really nicely. And it's nice to make sure that you combine each ingredient along the way so you have a really smooth paste. We're also gonna add a little bit of vegetable oil. This helps to keep the, case, the cake really moist. And we're gonna add just a bit of sugar. The remaining sugar will be put with our egg whites there's no need to scale it or divide it too carefully. It's all gonna end up in the cake. But I would say it's about two tablespoons into your egg yolk base and the remaining will go with your meringue. At this point, I like to change to a whisk. The next step is going to be sifting our dry ingredients. So we have some all-purpose flour, baking powder, and cornstarch. Cornstarch helps to cut the protein content of the flour to make your cake really tender. We're gonna hand whisk this to make a nice smooth paste, which is the base for our cake. You don't need to be too concerned about over mixing. What's really important is that everything is well combined and smooth. You should be keeping an eye on your egg whites so that they don't over whip. So at this stage, we're gonna be checking in with our whipping egg whites. I've turned them up a little bit um, to get them to really aerate. Once you notice that they're starting to look a bit foamy and stable, we start to add our sugar in, in a continuous steady stream. So we just gradually add our sugar. The sugar, of course, adds sweetness and moisture to the cake, but it also helps to stabilize the egg whites and allows them to whip up. This meringue will need about another one to three minutes before it's stable enough that we can fold it into our cake base. And what you're looking for is for the egg whites to look a little bit more firm. We're aiming for about medium to medium stiff peak for our egg whites. It's important to keep an eye on your egg whites when they're whipping as um, over whipped egg whites create a less nice texture for your cake. Your egg whites should be glossy and smooth once you've whipped them. So once you're ready to fold your sponge, um, you just want to start by incorporating a little bit of your egg whites into your egg yolk mixture. The reason that we do this is because the egg yolk mixture is quite a bit firmer than your egg whites and you don't want to uh, lose all of the air in your egg whites by adding them all at once. So we add a little bit of the egg whites and incorporate with a whisk, just making slow steady circles. So you'll notice that now the texture of your yolk mixture has become much more smooth. And at this stage, I would swap from a whisk to a spatula. 
so that we can fold quite delicately. The last step is to add in our lemon juice. So I just pour it gently around the surface of the, the cake mix and fold delicately in. We add the lemon juice last as it can have a small effect of breaking down your egg whites. So you wanna just add that right before it goes into the oven. Once your mixture is uh, completely ready, we go ahead and pour into the pan. There's no need to add any paper or baking spray when you're baking this type of cake because you want the cake to be able to use the side walls of the cake pan to climb high. I'd recommend using the back of a spoon or a small spatula to just gently smooth the surface of the cake. And we give just a very gentle tap to make sure that you don't have any air pockets sitting at the bottom. So a little shake and a tap is an important tip to make sure that you don't have any holes of air along the bottom edge of your cake. And so when I joined Black Sheep, it's really important to me to put a lot of energy and enthusiasm behind butter. Um, what we're really looking to do with butter is encourage people to see nostalgic American style desserts um, and really get a chance to experience those. The desserts that we're serving um, are all classics um, and things that I see as being really decadent and ingredient focused um, and most importantly just being really um, shareable, something you want to, to give to your family, something that you want to give to your friends as a celebration. Having a nice tidy looking cake is to remove any excess crumbs that you've created. So I do this with just using my hands, gently applying pressure to the top and to the sides. This will help to prevent crumbs from getting stuck in your cream. The first step that we'll be doing is cutting the base of the cake, which will be the top of our cake now. Anytime you cut a cake, you just want to use small, smooth motions and gently rotate the cake. We're not trying to cut too much off here. We just want to show the inside and remove the top edge. You can just remove these pieces and if you still see a little bit of color, that's fine because we'll be covering it with cream and strawberries, but if you'd like to remove it for tidiness, you can. The next step will be to slice our cake in half. So again, small smooth motions back and forth, keeping the knife just straight out from your body and using your hand for gentle pressure to turn the cake. Sponge cakes tend to be very tender, so it's really important to move slowly and patiently until you get all the way across. I also like to remove what was the top of our cake, just a little bit. So it's the same idea here. And again, I keep it inverted so that what was the bottom of the cake pan is the top because it's a tiny bit narrower and it'll give your cake a little bit prettier of a look. So we've left the bottom layer on the cake circle. We've taken the top circle off. And now we're going to add a generous amount of the strawberry cooking liquid. No need to waste this, it has so much good flavor. It's also really great to use this while it's a little bit warm as this will help it to really soak into the cake. But you could also use a spoon if you don't have one. I try and avoid going too close to the edges because I'd like the edge to have the cream on the outside and the aesthetic is more clean if the soak is just a tiny bit inside. Once you have a nice amount of soak, you're ready to start building your cake. So we're gonna use the cream. I use a piping bag, but you could use any sort of a Ziploc bag. And we're making some loops around the outside. Of course, if you're making this at home and you prefer, you can just spread this on using a spoon or a knife. And then we just fill in the center. No need to be too structured. I imagine that the cream is about one and a half to two cm tall. is by nicely arranging them in a ring around the cake. So it's quite generous as we're using very big pieces. And you wanna keep them quite close to the edge so that even once you put the next layer of cake on, you can still see these juicy strawberries. This dessert is really versatile. Again, you can do this with about any type of fruit you like. To finish this layer, we're just gonna pipe a little bit more cream to fill in the gaps. This extra bit of cream will also help our next layer of sponge 
not to slip. When you put your cake on top, you wanna give it a good wiggle and press. Take a quick look, make sure it's nice and level. And you should see that the cream is hanging over just delicately and that there's a lot of kind of juicy strawberry showing through. And it's quite similar to the way that we decorate the inside layer. So we're gonna start with a nice amount of strawberry syrup. For this layer, I don't pipe quite as closely to the edge because I, help, I think it helps keep the cake looking a little bit tidier. The most important thing about a strawberry shortcake, I think, is that it's quite generous with the amount that you put of all the ingredients. So once we get to the top, we're gonna start with a few whole strawberries. And if you want it to look a little tidier, of course you can drain these off, but I really like leaving them looking very juicy. I think it makes it look extra delicious, and of course it makes it taste extra delicious. We do have a few recommendations of things that you might want to pair with it. Of course, for Valentine's, I think it's very classic to have champagne. Strawberry shortcake and champagne sounds like a winning combination to me. Alternatively, you might pair it with a bit of limoncello, uh, sparkling lemonade, um, or really any beverage of your choice to celebrate. We wanted to add a little bit of heart decoration. So these are just egg whites that are warmed with icing sugar and then whipped, again, with an electric mixer or with a hand whisk. We leave them above our oven. You can leave them anywhere warm, maybe in an oven with the, uh, with the heat turned off overnight until they dry into some kind of little crisp, crispy hearts. Once you've got a few of these all around, you have a complete strawberry shortcake. Hope you enjoy.